uh, about the misery being inflicted on Londoners uh, by the incompetent running of TfL. It's worth bearing in mind, not only do the party opposite vote against our minimum service levels, which will provide respite for the hard-working British public, that the, the, the Mayor of London, since the pandemic, has received £6 billion of additional funding for transport services. So for us to be in the situation that we are find ourselves in today is simply unacceptable. Yeah. 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 Thank you, Mr Speaker. Um, an investigation reported in The Guardian and the BBC revealed that in the last year, on more than 450 instances, sewage was leaking into cancer wards, maternity units and A&E departments. Without urgent action, the legacy of this Conservative government on the NHS will be an image of a nurse cleaning up sewage around a patient in a crumbling hospital. Will the Prime Minister commit to that pledge of building 40 hospitals by 2030, including in West Hertfordshire, and will he establish a fund to repair those hospitals that are in a dire state of disrepair? Well, Mr. Mr Speaker, we are investing record sums in NHS capital to upgrade dozens of hospitals across the country, but in particular to build 40 new hospitals, and we are committed in particular to a new hospital scheme at West Hertfordshire Hospital NHS Trust as part of that programme, and the programme is working closely with the Trust on their plans in lines with the approach that we have taken nationally. Mark Plitchard. Hey. Speaker, does the Prime Minister agree with me that agritech is a vital part of the UK economy, and in particular the excellent work of the Crop and Environment Research Centre at Harper Adams University in Shropshire? I know he has a busy schedule, but could he dispatch the Secretary of State to come and look at that <laughs> research centre, and in particular this, the women leading science and maths at Harper Adams, and indeed leading the world? Yeah, yeah. I agree with my uh, honourable friend, and in particular Harper Adams is a fantastic example of the type of innovation uh, and skills provision that we need in our agri-tech sector, and that's why I'm pleased post-Brexit that we can introduce the gene editing bill, Mr Speaker, which will help drive productivity and efficiency in our agricultural sector even further. But the government promised the 40 new hospitals three years ago and the Prime Minister's just uh, expressed his intention to proceed again. Two years ago, in St Mary's Paddington Hospital oh, yeah. serving and the birth centre of maternity wards are threatened by structural problems. This week, trust managers said the infrastructure is having an increasing impact on staff and patients. We just can't afford to continue to waste money on failing buildings. But the hospital is waiting for the commitment from the government for the funding under the new hospitals programme. Will today be the day that the Prime Minister commits to that specifically? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, Mr Speaker, as I said in my previous answer, the government is committed to the new hospitals programme. We've committed record sums to NHS Capital, not just for that programme, but for smaller scale upgrades across the country. And those conversations with Her Trust and others are happening in the same way across the country. And I look forward to those conversations continuing. Thank you, Mr Speaker, governments at all level, national and local should always strive to, de to deliver value for money for the taxpayer, yeah, 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 yeah. particularly in a cost of living crisis. Therefore, does the Prime Minister share my astonishment that my local Labour led <coughs> Westminster Council oh, yeah. voted last week to raise council tax by 2%, housing tenant, council tenants' rents by 7%, and increase allowances for its senior councillors by up to a staggering 45%. You've got to answer. Well, Mr. Can I just say, Prime Minister, I don't know who's giving you the advice, but take it from the chair. Please answer. Mr. Speaker, it is disappointing to see that I think it's been just under a year that the now Labour run Westminster Council has put its own councillors' pay ahead of everything else. I, ca I can't quite believe the figures that we heard from our honourable friend. A staggering, an eye watering 45% pay increase when people across our country and indeed the water suffering cost of living pressures. It's clear, Mr. Speaker, that it's only Conservative run councils that deliver for their residents. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, every child in the UK is entitled to free NHS dental treatment, but with 80% of practices not accepting children as new patients, 
Is the Prime Minister proud of his record on our children's dental health? Yeah. Yeah. Mr Speaker, we're investing £3 billion in NHS dentistry, and because of the reforms to the contract, there will be about 10% more activity this year above contracted levels. There are 500 more dentists in the NHS today, but also, I think, almost a 45% increase in the amount of dental care being provided to children. Eric Thomas. Mr Speaker, five years ago, £40 million of public funds were set aside for brain tumour research, but recent government figures suggest that a little as a quarter of that money has been deployed to researchers. The mechanism to distribute research funding effectively is broken. As a result, the brain tumour community has not seen the breakthroughs in treatment and survival rates that many of us believe they should have. Does my, Prime Minister, does my friend the Prime Minister agree with me that a unique, complex disease needs a unique response? And in what is Brain Tumour Awareness Month, will he make brain cancer a critical research priority across all cancers? Well, can, I, uh, can I thank my honourable friend for his thoughtful and powerful question? He's absolutely right about the importance of medical research being expedited so we can deliver better care for the people who are affected. I'll make sure that he gets a meeting with the relevant minister so we can ensure that that funding gets out to the people who need it and we can bring relief to them as quickly as we can. Joanna yeah. Chuck. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Uh, with the encouragement of the British Government, female prosecutors and female judges in Afghanistan stood up for the rule of law and for a more inclusive and equal nation. Those left behind are in mortal danger. Last year, I met with senior officials at the Foreign Office who were open to making a specific case for at least some of these women to be relocated to the United Kingdom. But nothing has happened since then. This dire situation requires a prime ministerial intervention. So I'm not asking to meet the prime minister's officials or his ministers. I'm asking him directly, will he meet with me to see what we can do for these women? Yeah. Prime Minister. I'm very happy to meet with the uh, Honourable Lady, and she will know that we take our obligations to those who helped and served in Afghanistan extremely seriously, both through the Arab scheme and the ACRS scheme. We have already brought 20,000 refugees from Afghanistan to the UK. We've worked closely with the UNHCR and others on those legal routes, but I'd be happy to meet with her to ensure that we're targeting our compassion, our generosity on the people who most need it and not those who are coming here illegally. Caroline Nelson. Mr Speaker, at the height of the pandemic, centre-assessed grades allowed our young people to move forward with their lives. Lara my very brave young constituent, is now battling cancer and will not sit the GCSE exams she has worked so hard for and could be left with only a certificate of recognition. In exceptional circumstances such as these, why can't the same principle apply? Would my right honourable friend, the Prime Minister, look compassionately at this situation? I'm going to start by sending my best wishes to Lara and thanking my honourable friend for raising her case uh, in, in Parliament. Of course, it's incredibly upsetting and challenging for children and young people to be diagnosed with a serious illness and especially so close to their exams. Now, there are um, allowances that are made, and in the first instance, students will speak to their school or their college to make those reasonable adjustments, but I'll be happy to make sure that we work with my honourable friend to find a resolution in Lara's case. Dr. Rupa Hub. Mr. Speaker, I welcome the PM's numeracy drive, but did he know that some 7.1 million adults in England are functionally illiterate? It's often diagnosed late in life, like with TV's Jay Blades, if at all. So, would he thank the entirely voluntary Read Easy, who are turning this round at just £250 cost per new reader? and commit to a national strategy for eradicating this problem that's costing our economy £25 billion a year in lost competitiveness. Well, yeah. uh, well Mr Speaker, I agree with the Honourable Lady. Literacy and numeracy are critical uh, for adults to be able to participate, both in society and the economy. I'm happy to praise Read Easy for the work that they do. I look forward to learning more about them. But the best way to solve this problem is to ensure that our young children get...